He's trying to pull, pull the okie doke on us. He pulled the thing a couple weeks ago about the trade to the uh, yeah. to the Hawks, which he admitted was a total scam, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And now on Monday, Blake Griffin tweeted, at Paul Pierce and at Jalen Rose, y'all are soft, but not nearly as soft as at Boogie Cousins. Hashtag soft like Charmin. Hashtag Charmin partner. Yeah. Okay, that was at 4.08 p.m. Okay. And then at 4.50 p.m., Boogie Cousins tweeted, Yo, at Blake Griffin 23, you have no room to talk. Your skills need so much cleanup, it'll take more than at Charmin to wipe your soft act off the court. Hashtag soft like Charmin. Hashtag Charmin partner. Okay, so they're doing, by like Paul Pierce, sometimes they feel bad for softies like Jalen Rose of an empty trophy case. Maybe hash, maybe at Charmin should fill it with uh, hashtag not like Charmin oil. And then it, and they, they go back and forth. They're being paid by Charmin. I know. What's the big deal? They're being paid by Charmin. So? They're making this it out fun. to be they're at some sort of a spat and all they're oh, doing. This is fun. No, it's not. It's just a commercial. So? Okay. So would we rather watch a commercial or see some humorous tweets between athletes? But that's humorous. I mean, I think it's humorous. Jalen Rhodes is at Paul Pierce 34. I just ran out of TP and thought of you. Too bad at Charmin didn't have courtside delivery back in 2008. When you scored, you are when you scored, you are hashtag slam dump. Because remember, he said he had to go to the bathroom. I, I do slam I do. dump. Yeah. I like that. I think that's pretty funny. I don't know. I mean, this would be like if you were tweeting every day and saying like, uh, you know, wow. Having a bad day, but at least have a great mortgage thanks to at Capital Mortgage Funding and at Harry Glanz and at Dan Burke. It's you know like, what? People do that stuff. I don't like that stuff. Okay. I don't like selling the tweets, you know? I don't know. Hashtag low rate, hashtag lower than Andre Drummond's free throw percentage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't think Twitter makes money. I, I, I don't know. Actually, I don't, I don't know the business model of Twitter. Well, but Charmin I don't think, advertises, obviously. I don't know. Charmin's paying these guys to do it. So I don't I, think Charmin's I, paying Twitter. Probably. You know, I mean, this, this, I, I, I know this stuff goes on, but don't you find it kind of like disingenuous? No, because you, everybody knows what it is. I don't think everybody does, actually. I think most people do. But like, I first saw this story on Yard Barker yesterday, and the headline was Blake Griffin, Demarcus Cousins go at it on Twitter. The NBA offseason's officially here, ladies and gentlemen. Here's your evidence: Blake Griffin, Demarcus Cousins got into a Twitter spat on Monday. Maybe the people Yard Barker need to read carefully. Yes, me read the hashtag soft like sharp. All right, it's time for the hashtag two grand slam. It's the Jamie and Stoney two grand slam. Your chance to win two thousand dollars in sixty seconds. Brought to you by Genesis Credit Union. That's right. It is time for the two grand oh, well, slam. Well, how, how can it be brought to? It shouldn't be brought to by Genesis Credit Union. I don't know. You don't want to see things sponsored, Jamie. No, no. I'm okay with things sponsored. I'm, I'm not okay with pretending that things aren't sponsored. Oh. I mean, that's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I do you know what I'm saying? Who's my favorite tailor? It's not Maurice Taylor. It's Taylor Chevrolet. Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. Okay. 
When you tweet that, I'll be like, all right, Stoney, enough. All right, it's uh, time for the two grand slam, 248-539-9797 is the telephone number. 60 seconds, $2,000 on the line. Last week on Tuesday, we had nine out of 10. Kings Island in Ohio yeah. is the one that we missed. So there's no Kings Island question on this one, Stoney. No, there's not. This, uh, I think, is pretty damn gettable. This is pretty damn gettable. Heather? Yes, I agree. I got um, six right. You got six a lot right. for me. Okay. That, that's, the bar is high there for yeah. six? Okay. Let's go to Jeremy in beautiful Lapeer, Michigan. We'll come back to it, and uh, good luck. That's all we can say. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, the clock will start when I start asking the first question. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. Who's the manager of the Detroit Tigers? Ron Garfield. Tim Allen voices this character in Toy Story. Full play here. Nick Nurse is the head coach of this NBA team. Strong rep. Craig Berube is the head coach of this NHL team. Pass. Who's the owner of the Dallas Cowboys? Jerry Jones. Who's the owner of the New England Patriots? Robert Kraft. Tom Brady's married to this supermodel. Uh, Giselle Bunch. Salem is the capital of this state. Oregon. Marcus Mariota played for this college. Oregon. She played Monica in the sitcom Friends. Courtney Cox. Craig Berube is the head coach of this NHL team.
are many reasons to grab two bottles of Ice Mountain brand 100% natural spring water. You'll want to have one for when it's hot out and another for when it's so hot you start missing your snow shovel. Or maybe you'll want one when you're enjoying a brisk hike and another when you realize that five mile trail is one way and not a loop like that guy at the trailhead told you. Whatever your reason, hydration favors the prepared. So go on, prepare yourself with Ice Mountain brand 100% natural spring water. Grab two bottles at your local speedway today. Tuning in, we had Jeremy from Lapeer, 
who said that the head coach, that Craig Berube was the head coach of the Boston Bruins, not yes. the St. Louis Blues. Very close. Very close. Uh, so, Chris, obviously this is a big weekend. Uh, people still have great, great affection uh, for the 84 team, as you well know. Um, kind of tell us about an outline of, of what to expect this weekend down at the ballpark. No, that's absolutely right. I mean, the 1984 Tigers certainly one of the most beloved teams in Detroit sports history, and it's the 35th anniversary of their championship, and we're going to celebrate them all weekend. As you said, it starts on Friday. We have a Q&A with Tram and Lou. It'll take place on the concourse where you can ask them questions. Um, that night, we have a mini back giveaway featuring Lance Parrish and uh, Lou Whitaker still celebrating their Silver Slugger Awards. Saturday, the Sparky Anderson bobblehead. Um, the entire team will have a Q&A on the concourse. You can interact with them, and then we'll have an on-field celebration. So it's going to be a lot of fun all weekend and just a great chance to get up close to those guys. And, and in this town, obviously, it's the Tigers' last championship, but it's, it's amazing the, how this community is still, still embraces that team. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, just think about the names and the people who will be there. Tram, Lou, Jack, Gibby, Chet Lemon, Willie, Lance, Dan Petrie. I mean, every one of those guys, like every one of us can rattle off that entire team. And, and there are very few teams in, in the history of Detroit sports where I think you can do that. And just they're just beloved and they carry a special place in our hearts for sure. Uh, we're talking to Chris Granger here on 97 won the ticket. Chris, we had um, Ron Colangelo here in studio about a month ago when he kicked off the, the big June sales that you guys did that 40 hours flash sale i know you had a lot of success obviously the team is struggling there's no doubt about that and, and we're hoping for the future from the kids down in erie and in lakeland and i know riley green got off to a heck of a start yesterday um but what's the interaction from the fans in the ballpark for the major league club and are you looking to maybe duplicate something like you did for that june sales event because obviously put a lot of fannies and seats down yeah that went really well for us and, and as you might imagine we're plotting something again, so stay tuned for something in July for the Blue Jays or for the Red Sox coming up to celebrate the 4th of July. Um, but again, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's just, it's a great time in Comerica Park. Like, people love being there, whether it's the fireworks or, you know, value pricing on burgers and hot dogs and beers. Like, it's just, it's a great time out to celebrate summer, to get together with your friends and just enjoy being out at the park. So, more to come on that, but, but stay tuned. We certainly have another trick or two up our sleeves. You've been in this sports business for a while, working with Sacramento, and the Kings were not exactly a great franchise for most of the, the years there, but yet the building still was packed. They didn't, you know, they had nothing, there were no other teams, there was no competition. But we're seeing this around a lot of sports, not just here. When the, when the teams are not good or competitive, people just aren't going to the games as much. What can you do, or what can, not just here, what can ownership do uh, to, I don't know, is it just, just drop ticket prices to get more people into the game? Because you're right, people, when they get to the game, even once the game starts, yeah, you might not have a great team to root for, but it's still a lot of fun, whether it's the you know Red Wings, Tigers, Pistons, whatever. Yeah, that's exactly right. I just, listen, at, at the end of the day, like we all love to be there when the team is winning. But as we also know, like that's cyclical and, and that comes and goes. So I think it's contingent upon us as an organization for the Tigers or for the Red Wings to continue to do things to make it fun and give you great value for your experience and put on a great show night in and night out. And, you know, if, if you don't come because we're losing, like I get it, that's fine. But it's still fun. It's still fun. It's still fun to hang out with your friends or bring your kids to a game. And, and we try to do things through different ticket packages or different types of entertainment on the field or different deals to continue to be top of mind to put us in your consideration set. Do you have a theory, Chris, on where this is all heading? We, we had a story last week, I think it was at the Houston Rockets, Stoney, who are going to set up more of a, like, almost like a patio down behind the basket. The Wizards, I think. The Wizards for, like, a high-end ticket. And, and while I understand that suites are a very important part of business, I'm not denying that, you know, obviously most of our listeners will never sit in a suite, but they still want to come to the games. Like, is the future of stadiums, is the future of, of the fan interaction, is it for the suite holders? Or do you think there'll be a movement back to try to get, you know, the $10 tickets for fans who just want to go and maybe not get the greatest seats in the world, but still get in the ballpark or get in the arena? Yeah, well, where I think ultimately it's headed, and, and I don't know that it's headed anywhere, but it's just a, a nice reminder for us, like, sports, when done well, people together and it builds community and in a world where we're all on our cell phones and we're all disconnected and we can connect with the world from our couch at home by ourselves and our three screens like there's something magical about doing things together so i think what you're going to see in sports going forward is a shift within venues and stadiums and arenas to create more gathering space 
yourself because you've got you know Fox Sports you know pays for rights fees and sometimes people say you know what it's so good on television at home why am I going down there if the weather's not great or whatever? Well, again, like I, I just think there's something magical about viewing sports together. Like you want to high five somebody, you want to be there when that moment happens. You can tell other people about it. It's just it's better to do it live. So from our standpoint, again, it goes back to the things we've talked about. We have to continue to come up with ways to one make it a great value for people, two make it great in arena entertainment or in stadium entertainment for people, and three again allow people to move about the stadium and to experience different things within the stadium rather than just one seat for two hours or three hours at a time. So I think you're going to see a real change in stadiums over the next ten years or so as, as we try to achieve that for people. All right, I'll put you on the hot seat. The, the great satisfaction Tiger fans had last year was when both Trammell and Morris got into the Hall of Fame. And you guys retired both of their numbers last year. A lot of Tiger fans want to see the same treatment from Lou Whitaker. I know you can't put him in the Hall of Fame, but is there a talk of retiring number one for Lou? We talk about Lou all the time. He's obviously one of our iconic players, one of our favorites of all time. So we will see. We will see. But, um, you know, I, I, I can't say too much, but I will say stay tuned. Ooh, I like that. And then I'll ask about somebody from your other team, number 91 for the Red Wings. Will we ever see? Sergey Fedorov's jersey. Uh, I'll say the exact same thing. We talk about our legends all the time. Um, we certainly know who our iconic players are. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with, with all of these guys. Like we, we're, we're so lucky in Detroit. We're so lucky with these teams in particular to have such an amazing array of stars and an amazing array of fan favorites. And, and we certainly want to do everything we can to make sure that the, the cream of the crop, the top of the top, are honored in the way they should. So we'll see. I believe the NHL schedule comes out today, I believe. And I know they, they've released the home opener is Sunday, October 6th against Dallas, the Dallas Stars. Five o'clock faceoff, so people can look forward to that soon. That's exactly right. We're excited for the Red Wings development camp, obviously, going on this week as well. Um, fans can come down and see some of our new draftees play for free um, over the course of the week here. So go to redwings.com and you can pick up tickets for that or, or certainly go to tigers.com to pick up tickets for this weekend's event. Hey, uh, Chris, thanks for the time. Enjoy the weekend. It'll be a big weekend down at Comerica Park, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Chris Tigers. All right, Chris Granger, he's the group president, sports and entertainment of Illich Holdings. And uh, as you mentioned, Stoney came from Sacramento, where he was a key, like, key role in the development of the Kings, popularity of the Kings, the new arena there. And obviously came here in time for the opening of Little Caesars Arena and everything that goes along with it. Did he just toss us a little bit of a uh, teaser there? questions then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard and when you need to hire fast accelerate your results with sponsored jobs new users can try for free at indeed.com slash radio that's indeed.com slash radio terms conditions and quality standards do apply 971 the ticket traffic this report brought to you by flame heating cooling plumbing and electrical look at your ac unit get the green light before temperatures rise your air conditioning unit inspection today for just $99 from Flame Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical. Call the experts at Flame First or visit FlameFurnace.com. 94 heading eastbound at Wayne Road, an accident is blocking the left shoulder. Traffic is backed up now past 275. School is on the 275 north and southbound ramp to 94 east. Traffic also brought to you by Buffalo and Chevrolet. Hi guys, summer is here and it's time to upgrade your ride. So stop by Buffalo and Chevrolet's pre-owned department. Let us show you our great selection and pick the perfect vehicle for you and your family. Visit us today at 17 and a half in Van Dyke or 24-7 at buffused.com. I'm Michelle Pena of the WWJ 24-hour traffic center. Like for my afternoons. I don't see Al Avila making any short moves. I see Josh Harrison getting bad for 40 years. Jody Murphy. I mean, I want to find Matt Moore. Matt Moore was one of the five worst pitchers in baseball last year. Maybe we're going to bring him to the American League to make him better. These aren't true moves. Mike Valenti, afternoons 2 to 6 on 97. The ticket. If you try to purchase a gun for someone who can't.
can, you can buy yourself 10 years in jail. If a friend or relative asks you to lie to a federally licensed firearms retailer so you can buy a gun for them, don't do it. It's not worth 10 years in jail. Whatever you do, don't lie for the other guy. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by the NSSF, the National Shooting Sports Foundation. Remember, don't lie for the other guy. Visit them on the web at don'tlie.org. The CBS Sports Minute is brought to you by soldbymarkz.com. CBS Sports Minute, sponsored by Fidelity Investments at Fidelity. Nothing stands between you and your money. Fidelity Brokerage Services, NYSE, SIPC. It wasn't easy, and it wasn't pretty. And the U.S. women's soccer team needed help from a ticky-tack penalty call yesterday. A Team USA got it done, beating Spain 2-1 on a pair of Megan Rapino penalty kicks to advance to Friday's showdown against host France. Now the two favorites are set to clash in a quarterfinals that's worthy of a championship matchup. So what is Rapino expecting? Hopefully a complete spectacle, just an absolute media circus, tweeted the controversial and flamboyant co-captain. I hope it's huge and crazy. This is the best game. This is what everybody wanted, so I just hope it's a total bleep show circus. These are the biggest games that you dream about as a kid. Now it's all about the focus for the USA women's team to winning. A more science.
see it for three, a couple of pass balls. Michigan looked a little bit shaken up, but they rallied some really clutch pitching by Tommy Henry, uh, the lefty for the University of Michigan. And they are now one win away from winning the national championship. And if they pull this off, look, obviously college baseball is not as popular as some of the other sports. But when you look at who's won, with the exception of the New England Patriots, who's won the championships, I mean, teams that you probably didn't expect, St. Louis Blues, Toronto Raptors, and, and uh, college basketball. Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, 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 so I think it's, uh, it's kind of weird that a team, you know, once again, coming from nowhere. I mean, Michigan was probably like the last one to even get in. I, I don't know how, the, I, I really, you know, I like most, I think, Michiganders started kind of picking up on the story after they got out of the first weekend. Right. And then went on to UCLA. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I had him tracking the entire way. Um, I think what's notable, and they talked about this a bit in the broadcast last night, is the fact that this is a northern team. And the distinct advantages that the southern teams have oh, is yes. crazy. But this is not the first Big Ten team. In Indiana, they talked about Indiana. Illinois got close a couple years ago. I guess Purdue got close a couple years ago. Um, I, I think it's fascinating. I, you know what happened last night? And I, I, uh, I thought this was hilarious. I got a text from a friend of mine who is a... Big Michigan State guy. I mean, as green and white as they come. Mm -hmm. And he texted me about the game. And I texted him back and I said, are you hate watching Wolverines right now? And he said, maybe. <laughs> and I just wonder how many Michigan State fans who ordinarily would never be watching the World Series, the College World Series final. Because let's be honest, okay? We can all sit here and go, oh, yeah, it's kind of fun to watch, and I might tune by. Yeah, I, I watched more of the, I, I, I'd say I watched more college baseball last night than I've watched the rest of my life combined, other than when I actually went to games as a college student, okay? And, and, and so the, there have to be people out there, and I'm looking at you and you and you and you, who are Michigan State fans who are actually hate watching this. Oh, there are some, absolutely. Oh, there's no they're doubt. watching to become big Vanderbilt baseball fans because they do not want Michigan to win a national championship. And just so you don't think I'm a blue wall guy, the same would be true if Michigan State were in this position as well. But as That's I, just how rivalries work. Right, but as I said last week, and ticket Tech said I'm crazy, but I, I mean, the person that I've run into who are Michigan State fans, they actually are watching this, they, they're not going to lose sleep in Michigan. They actually think it's cool that Michigan's doing it and it's because it's baseball, they don't care. So they'd rather have a team from the Big Ten win. In this sport, you must talk to the smallest I piece must. of the minority I, I, pie. I must. Because no one I know is doing that. Well, I, uh, I'm telling you. This is like somebody suggested to me last night that the field was crowded. <laughs> I mean, that's how well, you know, they are. Back at King, you know, when, when he came in to take the it's job. It's a strike, Jim. It's a strike. <laughs> the cover was bare when he got here. I know. And he completely rebuilt it. By the way, the last team from, like, this area to win a national championship was Ohio State in 1966. The last team to win the College World Series. Yeah. It's, in, it's incredible. I mean, it's, it's, I know. It's unfair. If you go online and look at, like, schedules for college baseball teams, a team like Florida State, they played their first game in early February or late January. Whereas in Michigan, they might go out and play in some of these tournaments. Yeah. They play in California, they'll play down south. But they don't play their first home game until March, right. maybe. And it's still freezing. Yeah, it is brutal. So, I mean, when it comes to recruiting visits, it, you know, I mean, they, 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 you know, again, they, I'm, I'm parroting what they talked about in the broadcast last night, but the impact that this can have on the program is significant. Yeah. But nobody really has been able to sustain it. No. You know, year in and year. But back it's just been the NCAA tournament three times. So it's not like right. this is like a complete shot in the dark. No. But it's not like a superpower of college baseball. No. They just showed ESPN 201 odds to win it all when they entered the NCAA tournament. And weren't, they, right. weren't those the longest of all the teams yeah. in the tournament? I believe. So we are, again, I continue to equate it to like NC State's run in basketball. Yeah. It's, it's miraculous. Maybe that's a reason why some Spartan fans aren't necessarily like hardcore against it. Because Only Stoney's friends. Because there, there is a people like underdogs, even sometimes when it's a rival. Yeah, 
But I think Michigan yeah, I State that. fans would have a hard time with Michigan ever being an underdog. You know, See, because I, it's I, Michigan. I just think because it's this sport, nobody, they don't care that much. I think it's how they're doing it, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, like what you say, Jamie, about how they just come out of the gate and put runs on the board yeah. early. You, you made a great comparison. Very 84 Tiger-like. That yeah. team needs to do that. And then they, they've, got, they've got two starters. You only got to win two games. Oh, no, I know. No, it's I, – I think it's fantastic. I mean, I – but I, but I think it's one of those stories that kind of sneaks up on you. All right, you, your son is a big Michigan State fan. So you rooting for Vanderbilt yesterday? Um, he wasn't really rooting. Okay. Maybe I watched the game. He wasn't right. rooting against Michigan. Okay. So no, definitely not rooting against Michigan. You think like Spartan fans tonight, Jamie? So let's just let's turn the tables. I know you're picking on Stony here, and I agree with you. I think mo most Spartan fans are. I'm don't not picking on Stony. I'm picking on Stony. Like, like Gators going to get up and like you know throw something at the wall tonight if Michigan wins? No, uh, I don't think they care that much. Right. No, but there was a there was a uh, Michigan. I think had runners second, third. I don't know. It was like the fourth inning, and the, the Vanderbilt pitcher got got a round or pop up, and then he struck out the guy to end the inning. I, I forget the exact exact scenario. I was like, did you just jump off your couch and say, come on? You know, like he's like maybe. You know. <laughs> so I think those fans are out there, but yeah. Again, the the the, the basis of the Michigan Michigan State rivalry. Yeah, there's some Michigan fans who hate Izzo. There's some state fans who hate Harbaugh, but mostly it's they, they they get sick of each other, right? Like, like our friend Mike Valenti, right? He's I believe is a Michigan State fan, right? I don't think he's got any issue with anybody at the university. He hates the fans, right? So, Michigan winning the national championship, it's, they have no animosity towards Eric Backage or Jimmy Kerr. Right. They have animosity towards Michigan right. fans. If they're, 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 they're going to get off their chest out, guy, right. like, yeah, national championship, like, shut up. Right. I don't even know who anybody on the team is. Right. You know that'll be the problem they have. Yeah. I don't think Mike likes Harbaugh. Well, I, 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 I agree with that, but I think what Mike has a harder time with is the religious religiousness that comes along with Harbaugh. That I know you don't feel it anymore, but you certainly felt it maybe three or four years ago. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was the perfect hire. Yeah, he's the same. Yeah, but and, and, and it hasn't worked it. out. No, it hasn't. But I, I think that's what he has a harder time with, is the blind faith that some people have, although we all agree that blind faith has gone away. I'm not that. And he, he tells me, he goes, he goes, I respect you as a Michigan fan. You're few and far between because I'm not the one that's saying, oh, they won the most games ever still, like always finding that talking point right. to say that you're better than them. I Michigan know. State's football program has absolutely dominated and been way better right than michigan that's my point is that i don't think mike has a problem as much with michigan university as with fan base right. that he has to deal with on social media on ticket tax etc etc i was sitting here talking about the michigan baseball team family it's crazy all right you think uh, the minions are rooting for michigan base are they, I, I don't know they've come out with their talking points yet coming up next heather has news we also have tickets to give away to see the Tigers take on the world champion Boston Red Sox, who will be here over the 4th of July weekend. We got tickets to that Friday, July 5th game. We'll tell you how you can win those coming up at 818. Right now, it's time for a sports update with Tony Ortiz on 97 1 the ticket. WXYT FM and WXYT HD1 Detroit. 97 1 ticket. A radio.com sports station. Sports headlines. All day, every day. Michigan now stands just one victory away from capturing their first college World Series title since 1962 after the Wolverines defeated Vanderbilt 7-4 in last night's opening game of the College World Series final. A game where catcher Joe Donovan admitted he was surprised to see how the Wolverines pitchers neutralized a very, very good Commodores offense. Whenever you face them, whether it's as a team at Vanderbilt or like in the summer, they're, it's, they're great hitters all around. And you look usually when hope that there's when you look at the other lineup that there's a few batters that you can uh, kind of settle in on and just they do not have any of those game two of the finals tonight in omaha team usa remains undefeated at the women's world cup of soccer as they double up on spain two to one yesterday in the opening game of the knockout round after a season where he led the milwaukee bucks to the best regular season record forward yana santa tacumpo was named the league's most valuable player at the nba's annual awards ceremonies last night in los angeles the Tigers look to end a four-game losing skid this evening as they battle the Texas Rangers in the opener of a three-game series at Comerica Park. First pitch at 7:10, right here on the ticket. The 2019 class that will enter the Hockey Hall of Fame set to be unveiled later today. Among those who are expected to get the call, former Red Wing Curtis Joseph, Jeremy Roenick, and legendary Canadian women's hockey player Haley Wickenheiser. 
Officials at HBO and with NFL Films are discussing a proposal that would allow the league to choose which teams are featured on Hard Knocks in future years. Now, according to stories out of New York, officials with HBO are looking for ways to, quote, shake up the show, which they reportedly feel is starting to become predictable and stable. From the Ticket Update Desk, I'm Tony Ortiz. For more, go to 971theticket.com. <laughs> Sun is out on what should be a beautiful day here in Detroit. High of 83 degrees. Nice night to head down to the ballpark. Should be nice all week and all weekend as well. Tigers taking on the Rangers starting tonight, and the Nationals come in, in over the weekend. It is time for news with Heather A. Park. Heather, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I am fantastic. Good. What's going Very on? Very good. Well, today is actually the 10th anniversary of Michael Jackson's death. This has like to that? be the fastest. I mean, you know how you always say, I can't believe it's only been. This, to me, this sets the record for, I can't believe it's only been. Because yeah. I can't believe it's only been 10 years. Also, 10 years since Farrah Fawcett. I was going to say, did you know that Farrah Fawcett died on the exact same day? Because her death was kind of overshadowed by his, without a doubt. Just kind of. Yeah, that might be an sure. understatement. For yeah, sure it was. Completely, so, totally overshadowed. Yeah. And let's not forget that the great Ed McMahon died days later. Ah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so in a couple days, we'll be uh, honoring the two yes. years of passing Ed McMahon. Well, there was this um, poll conducted by YouGov.com, also to find out how people were feeling about Michael Jackson now, these days. And 28% of people think that Michael's legacy did take a hit from his uh, child molestation allegations. And 44% of people say... Eh, their opinions on him stayed the same, and 12% of people believe he got better in their minds. Really? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say worse. Yeah. There's no yeah. doubt about it. But as we talked about when this that, that HBO movie came out earlier this year, yes. I still have uh, Michael Jackson music on my Spotify, so and when it, when it comes on, I don't turn it off. I, I don't love, go, oh, I he's, still on, he's still on my shuffle. By the way, today's the 27th anniversary of the passing of a former Miami Hurricane and Philadelphia Eagles, Jerome Brown. Really? And wow. then, so much like Farrah Fawcett to Michael Jackson, who died on the same day, Eric Andelsek got killed the, the Lions right. guard two days before Jerome Brown. Yeah. And that, so Jerome Brown's death, because it was a car crash and he was a bad, little bit better high-profile player, overshadowed Eric Andelsek. So wow. people never even, they never got that much play, yeah. much like Farrah Fawcett. And I actually misstated the date of Ed McMahon's passing. He died on, uh, on June the 23rd. So he died before Michael. Oh. Uh -huh. I thought he died after. But, well, that was Eric Andelsek. June yeah, 23rd. June 23rd. Yeah. Pretty well, the other day we were talking about celebrities dying in three. So that was McMahon, Jackson, and Farrah Fawcett. So Cuba Gooding Jr. wants the charges against him dropped because he insists that his accuser has a, quote, warped mental state. Oh, yeah, so I'm sure his, that'll do it. Yeah, so his attorneys went and found several quotes made by the accuser, all from her blog, which they basically feel prove that her mental state is unstable. Well, good so, luck with that. Yeah, I mean, the, the quotes, you know, I, I don't know what, what kind of blog this is that she, she writes, but one of them basically says that she was diagnosed with depression, ADHD, anxiety disorder, and PTSD, and basically learned that... Her brain is one big fat mass. Fat mass? <laughs> That's what she said. Are all of her brains fat masses? Pretty much. Uh, some probably more than others. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. My stomach's a fat mass. <laughs> okay. And then another one said that she is quite prideful and that she must win. And then, so there's all just, you can take them in different ways, but they're just taking sentences she wrote saying, look it, she must not be stable. None of this adds up. Let's drop all the charges. You know, I wonder, I, never, I didn't even stop to think about this, but in today's modern society with social media and you essentially have such a huge digital footprint. Yes, you do. That if you're accused of a crime or if you're part of any sort of a lawsuit, the attorneys can look back and basically look at look who it, this person has done. Doc, you know. And you document everything. Right. Not everyone, but a lot of people document everything on social media. Like last week, Stoney reposted when he went in drag and appeared on Channel 7. He did? Yeah. 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 That, might, that might show like some it. sort of a Is that on Twitter? Yeah, I know. See it. Some subversive no, 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 no. culture that he lives in, you know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. absolutely. I mean, I like watching Snapped. If my wife drops dead, does that mean I did it because I watched Snapped? Who knows? Just don't Google it. Don't, don't, don't Google, Google anything Snapped. about Snapped. Snapped is the program on Oxygen where basically wives kill husbands or husbands <laughs> kill wives. <laughs> 